For two years, Gail Irwin has been searching for the cause of her daughter's mysterious illness. But she is no closer to the answer, and Marissa is getting worse. When Marissa was 14, she started to have a sore throat. And I took her to the doc, the family doctor, who said that some of her lymph glands were enlarged. So the doctor sent her to an endocrinologist. He found she had an inflamed thyroid, easily treated with medicine, but not the cause of her symptoms. Then the endocrinologist noticed something else. And he noticed that my heart rate skipped every third beat. He immediately thought, you have to go to cardiologist right now. So we went and I started crying, so I was scared. You know, I didn't know what was going on. But once we did get to the cardiologist, he didn't think that it was a big deal. The cardiologist felt Marissa's heart arrhythmia was simply causing her to have abnormally low blood pressure, and that that was the source of all her problems. He said that if you take these high doses of Sudafed and caffeine and salt, it will increase her heart rate, which will increase her blood pressure, and she'll be fine. Well, I was on caffeine 24-7, so... With the diet, I was kind of bouncing around everywhere. <laughs> she, she got worse. She started complaining more and more of the pain in her head. Gail was desperate, so she found a new cardiologist, hoping he might be able to solve the mystery of Marissa's symptoms. That cardiologist confirmed that she did have problems with her blood pressure, but he didn't feel that she should be on all this salt and caffeine. What he thought was that Marissa had POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, in which the mere act of standing up causes the blood pressure to plummet and the heart to race. Basically, all the blood which should be being pumped up into your head was pooling in her legs. To treat the symptoms, the doctor put Marissa on prednisone, a steroid that can help elevate the blood pressure. Well, when Marissa was on the high doses of prednisone, we were concerned. She actually developed what's called moon face and uh, with the very chubby cheeks like a chipmunk. She got so swollen and was retaining so much fluid that the doctor thought it best to take her off of it. The swelling eventually went away, but Marissa's dizziness soon turned into full-blown blackouts. Many times Marissa would start to feel ill when she was in her classes and she would ask to go to the restroom. Once she got to the restroom, she would pass out and sometimes the teachers or the other kids would find her there. I missed about half of the school year in ninth grade. I missed like a month of 10th grade. The school finally started to feel that she was kind of a liability. And so they started sending a tutor to our hall to uh, help her get through her classes. So I was homeschooled till I graduated. Uh, Marissa's friends began to stop calling. They stopped asking Marissa you know, come over to go out or anything like that. Marissa was becoming very depressed. She felt that everybody was abandoning her. She just would say to me, I have no life. Stuck in the house, Marissa started to deteriorate even further. She's constantly tired. She's having a hard time staying awake. She's sick all the time. Her body just started to lose what little strength it already had. I couldn't do anything. I could barely walk to the kitchen, I was only seven steps. So if I'd have to walk like a distance, I'd have to be in a wheelchair. I thought, somebody needs to do something. I didn't know what it needed to be, but she's just kind of like wilting away and I didn't want to lose my sister. Sometimes when I would get really emotional about how I feel or what was going on, I couldn't say it out loud. So I would write letters to say whatever I was feeling just to get it out. Mom, I know for a fact that if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. And I want you to know that. Thank you for trying to help me, Marissa.